time once again to venture into UXW Bill's vault of interesting electronic curiosities. And those of you who are old enough will probably remember these, possibly from school. This is a portable turntable. Now these type of turntables were pretty common when I was a youngster in school. In fact, in kindergarten, I used to listen to the Letter People records on these. How many people remember the Letter People records? Raise your hand, leave a comment, like the video. <laughs> um, I came to have this particular example back in 2002 or so, and when the uh, local school system was going to demolish their high school building and replace it with a new one, and um, they auctioned off a lot of furniture and fittings from the old building, and that included a pile of these things, which they were selling at fixed price between five and ten dollars a piece, based on condition. And there were a lot of them out there, a lot of them in better shape than this one. But I picked this one out because it looked like it had been serviced relatively recently. It's still got a pretty good stylus on it. Uh, probably could probably could stand a replacement, but I don't think I've played it more than twenty-five hours since I brought it home that day. Anyway, they set a whole bunch of these things out by the dumpster because they didn't sell but maybe one or two of them. They had Califones, they had this one from GHV Electronics, which probably isn't in business anymore. They had VM ones, um, they had all kinds. They even had a couple of Ream Califones, and yes, that is the same Ream that makes furnaces and water heaters today. At one point in time, they owned the Califone company. Anyway, you can still get these today. The Califone company, at least, is still in business, the last I knew. And while these aren't a terribly high-fidelity device, they are still kind of handy to have if you want to, say, listen to your records somewhere where you haven't got a, a stereo system or something like that. Now, I definitely wouldn't recommend playing your really valuable records on here because this one, like many of the others, is equipped with an A-Static ceramic cartridge. It says it's an 81T or 89T on monophonic units, and this cartridge actually flips between LP and 78. This thing is capable of playing several different speeds of record. It can play 16 RPM records, 33 and a third. There's a parking position, of which more later. There's a 45 and a 78 setting. And presently, this is the only turntable I have that's capable of playing 78s. Now, the way that this thing works, this thing is uh, operated by a little shaded pole motor, uh, 60 cycles per second, used as the timing reference. And basically, that motor has a stepped shaft on it. And as this, as this switch over here is operated, the relationship of an idler wheel changes. And based on what step it's running against on that motor shaft, that determines the final speed of the turntable platter. Now this thing's set of internals are pretty simple. There's a simple amplifier and power distribution board up here. There's a transformer down here that has a notation on it 7405, which I would take to mean probably the fifth week of 1974. And this thing just has a single chip audio amplifier made by Panasonic on it, an AP4023S is what that's identified as. There's also a very impressive looking Nishikon 2000 microfarad filter capacitor on there. And this thing's starting to have some audible uh, 60 cycle hum in its output, so I'm thinking that maybe it's probably due for a recap here real soon. I've cleaned the controls on it so they work well, although it seems like the uh, volume control pot is not an audio tape or type. I don't know what to make of this. I don't know if this thing was repaired at some point in its life, but Obviously, there's an unused output tap on the transformer here. And then there's the simple little motor that drives the turntables, just a simple AC shaded pole motor. Input from the stylus, uh, the pilot light up here, which was broken. I had to do a little bit of a repair to that. Uh, if you take yours apart, and this thing just lifts out after two screws are unscrewed from each side, um, one screw on each side, despite the two holes up there. I suggest you be careful because this thing is easily broken off. In fact, that's why I had to glue it back in place. And then the output from the amplifier board goes to this simple paper cone speaker here. And this is a little speaker that was made in Holland. I don't know by who, but given that the table was put together in the U.S., it seems kind of interesting that they picked a speaker manufacturer who was making their products all the way over in Holland. The speaker does try to give an impression of some kind of quality standard because it's uh, it's a speaker with a main cone and then it has a second whizzer cone to handle the high notes. And if I had a flashlight I could shine it through the grill there and you could kind of see the whizzer cone. 
And of course the playback deck is floated with little springs on it so as to help dampen vibrations. Now this seems to me like it was probably one of the more basic models that was ever made because one thing that they talk about up here, they talk about models that had a second speaker for stereo operation. I have seen some of those. Um, they also talk about a connection for a, a microphone and they talk about, you know, tone controls as opposed to a simple simple tone control that does bass and treble all in one operation. Of course, because of this thing's portable nature, there is this locking set screw that has to be tightened down before you walk off with it. Otherwise, the tone arm is going to go all over the place and slap around and the stylus will be hurt. In just a moment here, I'll have a demonstration of how this thing sounds. Again, I wouldn't call it high fidelity, but it's certainly acceptable for what it is. Now, when you play a 33 and a third RPM record, or even a 78, they hang over the edge of the table, so it's something to think about if you get one of these. You also need to make sure if you find one of these that the cartridge that it's equipped with and the stylus are safely able to play stereophonic records. And this one clearly states inside its top cover here that stereophonic records may, of course, safely be played. So, without further ado, here is a demonstration. I'll have to keep this short because I don't want to get in trouble with the copyright police. There's a lot of lonely people tonight Trying to make it through to the morning light Me and you, baby, that's alright and as I mentioned earlier, a little bit of discussion about the off setting. Since this is an idler wheel driven turntable, one of the things that could happen if you left this thing in any of the speed positions is that the idler wheel could develop a flat spot where it's pressed up against the metal shaft coming out of the motor. So when you put this in the off position, the turntable is safely disengaged and the rubber wheel the rubber wheel is pulled away so it won't be de deformed and misshapen, which you would definitely hear in your audio. When you're done playing this thing, all you have to do is put this in the off position. The turntable will freewheel both ways when you have it there. Lock down your stylus, shut the lid, fasten the clips on both sides, and then unplug it from the outlet. Then you simply package up the cord inside the cord storage compartment inside the unit. And unlike some portable radios, there's actually enough room to do a decent job of that without fighting. And then, there's a simple carrying handle on the side that you can use to simply carry the unit to wherever you need it next or simply put it away.